So you're looking at buying a home, and I'd like to go over two things to kind of help you get started in the process. Uh, the first thing is to get your finances together, and the second being on how to choose a lender. I'm Ryan Blanco, I'm a realtor here in San Diego, and when I say get your finances together, um, I'm talking about getting a copy of your credit report. There's uh, TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. Those are the three major credit reporting bureaus who can provide you a credit report. So you can get one from one, two, or all three of them if you choose annualcreditreport.com that's another good source where you can get a free credit report once a year whatever source you end up using just make sure that uh, one or all three of your credit scores are on the report that way you have kind of something to go by so once you have that in hand you really want to go over it with a fine tooth comb you want to find out if there's any errors on the credit report and if there are you want to get those things fixed because obviously you want to help raise your credit score if you have a lot of outstanding debt, um, that's something you want to look into paying off before even applying for a loan. The more debt you have, the higher interest rate's going to be. Uh, so those are things you want to take care of before even visiting a lender. There's also mortgage calculators online, um, like home, home affordability type calculators, where you can plug in some numbers and estimate what your monthly payment would be based on the sales price of the house. So those are good guidelines to go by as well. Uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac recommend that no more than 30% of your income goes to housing and housing related expenses like property taxes and insurance. Alright, so now that your credit report is in good shape or at least on its way to be so, I'm going to go over the three major types of loans that we see here in Southern California. The first is a conventional type loan. Historically, it was a 20% down payment loan. However, recently, a lot of lenders will offer a conventional loan with less than 20% down. The only catch is you're usually going to be paying mortgage insurance with that loan. The next one is an FHA loan. An FHA loan is a 3.5% down payment loan. You will be paying mortgage insurance with that one. And it's usually for borrowers that are a little less qualified, maybe their credit score or their income isn't quite as good as what a conventional type borrower could afford. Uh, the final one is a VA loan. A VA loan is for military personnel only. It does allow for a 0% down payment type mortgage. So now that we've gone over the different types of loans, it's time to choose a lender. There's a ton of lenders out there, so I really suggest getting some sort of referral from maybe a friend or relative that has used a lender before. Maybe they just bought a house or refinanced. Uh, any good realtor would also be able to guide you in the right direction as far as lenders that they've used in the past. One thing I find that people don't do enough of when getting their pre-approval letter is to shop around. A lot of people just go with the first lender they come across or just go into their bank and get a pre-approval letter with them. But by shopping around, you're going to be able to compare the loans. You're going to be able to compare the interest rates, the fees, the terms, and put everything side by side and really decide who's the best lender for you. I think a big reason for this is people don't want their credit run multiple times. They think it's going to hurt their credit score. But according to Experian, that's one of the three major credit reporting agencies. If you do these um, inquiries pretty close to the same time period, they are not going to affect your credit score. These credit reporting agencies know that you're going to be shopping around for whatever kind of loan it is. So by doing everything in a short period of time, they're not going to make it affect your credit score because they know that you need to shop around for these particular loans. So once you have some lenders in mind, the good news for you is they're all pretty much going to want the same information. Of course, they want to run that credit report. They're also going to want two recent pay stubs from your employer, two years of tax returns. They're going to want to see what kind of assets you have as well. This could be money in a checking account, savings account, CD, retirement account. Maybe you have some money in stocks and bonds. If you have uh, other property, they're going to want to see what kind of rental income you're getting from that property. So once you provide these things, they're able to provide you with that pre-approval letter. And the pre-approval letter, of course, allows you to put offers on properties that you're interested in. Now, the pre-approval letter is one thing. Now, if you do put an offer on a property and it gets accepted and the property goes into escrow, they still have to go through a full approval process and that's done with an underwriter. It's a little more tedious type uh, situation and they're going to ask for additional financial documentation from you. There's many different types of lenders out there so I like to go over those briefly. Uh, the first one and probably the most easiest for people to understand is the big banks. Bank of America, Chase, Wells Fargo, we know them all and a lot of us are already dealing with them every day so that's a good place to start if you have an account with one of those banks to get a pre-approval letter. 
they are good, well-established organizations, so a lot of people are comfortable with them. But one of the drawbacks of using them is you don't always get to choose who you're working with, especially your loan officer. That's who you're dealing with on a majority of the loans. So a lot of these big banks are only as good as the actual person that you're dealing with. And a lot of times you don't know who you're going to get. Now the next type is a mortgage broker. A mortgage broker is kind of a middleman between you and a particular lender. A mortgage broker has access to a lot of different uh, types of lenders and different loan programs out there. So the good thing about a mortgage broker is they're able to kind of fit you into a certain program that you might not qualify for otherwise. Uh, they do cater to more, uh, I would say, less qualified buyers than other lenders. Now, if you have an account with a credit union, a credit union is also a great uh, place to check for a pre-approval letter. A lot of times they will offer a discount if you have other services with that particular credit union. All right, the last type of lender I'd like to talk about is your direct lender, sometimes referred to as a correspondent lender. A direct lender actually uses their own money when funding a loan. They normally have everything in-house from their processors to their underwriters, loan officers, and all their staff. So they are very efficient and good at communicating. Now, a direct lender is known for being able to do loans faster than anyone else. And because of this, they are more desirable to home sellers and their realtors alike. So in a real competitive environment where a seller is getting multiple offers, they are more likely to choose a direct lender type offer than one that is not. So a lot of home buyers don't think of the lender as, as really mattering at all when it comes to a seller taking their offer, but that's actually not the case. Now, no matter what kind of lender you choose, they should be able to help you with a lot of different things as far as choosing the terms of the loan, you know, how long the loan is going to be, how many years. They're going to be able to help you with your interest rate, maybe you should buy it down or not buy it down. They're going to be able to help you with how much to put down as a down payment. And they should all provide you with a good faith estimate so that you can actually compare all the loans side by sides between the different lenders. So hopefully this video has given you some great tips and some ammo to go out there when you do talk to the lenders. And once again, Ryan Blanco, thanks for watching.